Good afternoon everybody. Welcome to the channel. Hope you had an awesome day. Let's get right down to it. Today I went out for a walk with the uh, D300 and the uh, AFS Nikkor 18 to 200 millimeter 3.5 to 5.6 G ED VR lens. This is not the VR2. This is just the VR. Uh, today this lens still runs you uh, roughly around uh, six or seven hundred dollars. It came out uh, around, I think around, I don't know, I could be wrong. I never do this study before I come on the camera, right? <laughs> but uh, around 2007, something like that, uh, around the same time the D300 came out. It's a, uh, a, tele, a zoom. It has a, the new ones, I, I think that they replaced these with, the VR2s, I think they fixed this problem. But, uh, you know, it's never really bothered me. But what I found is that this lens, even though some people think you need to spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars for the perfect lens, and then you got to spend thousands and thousands, you know, to have the perfect camera, this is a perfect system, pretty much. If, uh, if you're just out doing photos for the, uh, to share on the internet, or if you're just taking pictures of friends, there's, there's, this is a really good system. You know, when the D300 came out, it was the camera to have. Wedding photographers had two, maybe three of them. People had to wait in line for them. It, it was such a big thing. It was like the D500 and the D850 and... I guess now maybe the Z9, I don't know. Z9, I think, is a professional body. These are semi-professional, professional bodies. But this D35, uh, D300, it's a, it's a real workhorse, and it does really good quality. Don't let people tell you that you need all of this expensive stuff, especially if you're just starting out. If you're just starting out and you want a good camera, a really, really, really good camera that will take all of the Nikon lenses and, and uh, pretty much you can throw at it. Uh, it has its own built-in flash. It has a command module to command the SB800 series flash. Uh, so you can command flashes with this, uh, off-camera flashes. It, uh, two, you know, I don't know. It was the, it was the camera to to beat. It's it still is. I still use this camera all the time. A lot of my bird photography, a lot of my still life photography is actually taken with this camera. Billboards, billboards today are still being uh, produced off a 12 megapixel camera, simply because they're better at a further distance than these high megapixel, you know, really. You, unless, unless you are a super, super serious, making all kinds of money with photography, I don't see any reason why people should be spending up in the neighborhood of ten to $30,000 on a camera. It's it, it's uh, it 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 makes no sense to me. But I guess everybody live and let live. You, we can look at that, and it's it's you know it's not. I'm not really calling anybody down, but when you really think about it, what are they doing with that? Like, uh, how, I don't understand why anybody would think they would need to spend that kind of money to share pictures on the internet or to take some pictures of their friends or or even weddings. These were used in weddings and there's probably, I bet you there's people still today using these cameras in weddings. So anyways, to get over all that, uh, you can probably buy uh, this camera body for all you beginners out there or people that want to start out in photography. Wow, what a bargain. You can get these for, really really good shape with a set of batteries and the cards for four hundred dollars the the lens used i don't know you could probably still get this lens for maybe 250 if you really shop uh it's a vr lens it's got it's got the switches this is a 
serious lens, extra, you know, this, this is not a joke. So uh, I took this camera out today with this lens and did some street photography in the morning. Uh, there should be about 30, 30, 30 photos maybe, something like that, that I took this morning and processed. So they'll be both, of course, black and white and color because I'm really, really getting into black and white photography. Film photography is coming for me. And I've, I'm sure you've seen a few of the cameras. But uh, yeah, there, there's another thing. If, if, if you need these brand new cameras, why is everybody all of a sudden buying film cameras from the 60s? Uh, why is it that uh, camera uh, film companies are actually beginning to produce film that they discontinued because there's such a demand. Prices on eBay on used film camera, 35 mil, no matter what it is, are going up and up and up because the demand is so great. So if you really want to do photography or do you just want to be out there spending money just to be, I've, you know, I've got the biggest camera and the fastest whatever. Uh, I, I'm sorry, but I really had to add this because I, I think a lot of this stuff is is hurting some beginning beginner photographers, and and I think a lot of this stuff is discouraging, and I think the belief that a better camera is going to make you a better photographer, and you're sharing the photos on social media, is a bunch of balarney, and and it, it's people should stop. A Z, a Z9 or a, a last month Z9, 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 everywhere you've seen was Z9. This month, M11, M11. Next month, it'll probably be something some other manufacturer made. These people are doing infomercials. So uh, really, if, you, if you're a beginner photographer and you want to get into photography or you really want a good setup, and your budget isn't that much, this is a deal of a lifetime. The D300, are you kidding me? And then you can buy all kinds of lenses. It'll run the new G lenses. It runs runs my 200 to 500 um, telephoto zoom wildlife lens. It's got 51 autofocus points. <laughs> it, it, the, the list goes on and on. It, it's... the it's the bargain of a lifetime. There's groups, D300, Nikon D300 groups on Facebook. Oh, have a look at some of the photos these people are taking and some of the photos I'm taking with, with some of these finer lenses and even and even the old lenses from the fifth, from, you know, 1960s and up, I'm putting lenses on this camera and doing content on YouTube and showing people the quality of photography I'm getting with this camera. So beginners, listen up. People that are intermediate, listen up. You don't have to be the richest person in the world to do really high quality for photography and impress yourself and teach yourself. There's a, if you need to learn about this, there's a, a, a person on YouTube called uh, Steve, Steve Perry, Wild uh, Backcountry, Backcountry Galleries. I do, I don't have a link. I don't even know how to share those links. But uh, he goes through the focus systems of Nikons and whatever. If you're a Canon person, then find the Canon like this. If you're a Sony person, then find the Sony like this. The, you know, just get out there and learn and get out there and do photography and really have a lot of fun is what it's all about. And learn, learn, learn. And one other point I need to, to tell you, don't just try sticking to one type of photography when you're starting out, or even if you're an intermediate, or even if you've been doing photography for four or five years. You, you, you know, you need to learn light, you need to learn exposure, you need to learn composition, you need to learn off-camera flash. It's very important. Uh, some people get scared of flash, but it's really easy. Uh, and I believe this even has TTL for flash. 
the metering system, the photos I took today are uh, two uh, aperture uh, ISO 200, uh, aperture uh, 5.6, and set on aperture priority. That's it. I never touched anything else on this camera. I did nothing but zoom in and out and shoot. So enjoy the photos. Please, uh, please don't get discouraged by uh, some of these people that are saying you need to do this or that camera is no longer viable and stuff like that. It's, they're not living in the same planet as some of these other people. Sometimes I wonder if these people are even photographers at all because I don't know anybody that's a photographer that will be telling somebody else that their photography isn't going to be any good because they don't have this or don't have that. Uh, that, that just doesn't happen in a good community. Uh, it, it doesn't matter if you're into collecting cars or whatever it is. The, uh, so anyways, I could ramble on forever. Don't get discouraged. Long reach, really good travel lens, really good travel lens. I tried to, of course it's winter time again. Uh, we had some golden hour. I tried to take as many different types of pictures with different reaches. I'm not putting the technical information on every, every picture or, or whatever. Uh, so I, I got some portraits and I've got some uh, zoomed in, zoomed out. I, uh, I never went down to 18. I, I, I usually don't go any further down than uh, 24 on, on these lenses. It doesn't matter, I think, what lens you own. If you go all the way down to the lowest, the lowest reach, uh, the lowest millimeters, your things are going to start bending and warping and anything that came a little bit out of uh, shape uh, from 24 up to 200 uh, in Lightroom I just did the lens correction, click the button, fix chromatic aberration, uh, do lens correction and oh, done. So uh, all you that have, all you people that, all you said, uh, up north Manitoba, <laughs> all you said, uh, all you people and all, all of all of the general public, I don't even know what the right word to say anymore to, to explain that. But everybody that owns a D300, get out there and do some shooting and really enjoy your camera because there's nothing wrong with this camera. There's only good things that come from this camera. It doesn't do video. I'm shooting the video on my phone. We have to upgrade our phones all the time, so why are you wanting to have video on your camera when you have it on your phone? <laughs> this phone will do 65 megapixels, 8K, a kajillion gigabytes, blow your computer up, <laughs> take you hours to process and hours to upload. So anyways, yeah, so uh, I know. I talked a lot, but I really, really, really wanted to tell you guys and all you people or everybody that uh, I myself went through the discouragement of thinking I needed to have the latest gear when I started out. And it was a really uh, serious thing. It really affected me. So I know this is affecting other people too. That this And it's wrong because, right? People are buying film cameras from the 50s, everybody, and using them and posting the results. So, Blarney, all of it. The uh, You'll be so impressed by this camera, and I know this camera has shot a lot of weddings with only one card. All of a sudden, you need two cards for weddings. Oh, you can't have anything but two cards. A lot of wedding photographers had two of these cameras and these weren't cheap when they first came out. They were probably close to 3,000 Canadian or something like that. So they probably had two cameras, one as a backup. The the two card system, ah, what did they do? What did they do when they did weddings with the 35 millimeter Nikon Fs? Everything was manual and the film was in the camera. The, oh no, right? It's, Fears, people putting fears on you. But uh, if you really, really want to stretch your photography out, this is a killer camera to own. So impressive, I'll never get rid of this camera. 
You can still buy batteries for this camera. All the lenses still fit. Rugged, it's a Nikon through and through, minus 30 for hours, still working. Okay, so I uh, hope you enjoy the photos I show you. Black and white, everything was taken with this com combination. Thank you for listening. Like, subscribe if you're still here because of my rambling on. Click the bell and uh, enjoy your photography. Enjoy the photo shows. See you later.